The world does not value the concept of flavor of the salt. And that is why the Apostle Paul reminded the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 2, 15 and 16. He said, Christians are the aroma from life to life and a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved. And they are an aroma of death to death among those who are perishing. Then there's a third group of writers who have focused their attention on the stinging impact of the salt upon a wound. And true, the church ought to be a rebuke and a judgment upon the sin of the world. The church ought to rub the world the wrong way. But unfortunately, what is happening today is not only that the church is not serving as a sting for the sin, the church is serving like molasses or honey to smooth the sin over. There's a fourth group of writers or commentators who have attempted to explain Christians as salt. They said that Christians in society must create thirst for God just as salt creates thirst for water. And that's a fine idea. In fact, medically I'm told that uh, without the proper percentage of salt in the body, the body dehydrates and dies. But that's not what Jesus intended by saying to us, that you are the salt of the earth. Every one of these analogies, every one of them has validity. Every one of them has importance. But I don't want you to miss the real meaning of what Jesus intended. The main purpose of Jesus' description of his followers of being salt is to preserve culture. It's preserve society. That's what salt is used for. In the time of Jesus. And what Jesus is saying to his followers is this. You are the salt of the earth. Not possibly. Not you may be or you can be. No. You are. You have no choice but to preserve the world from rotting. To preserve the world from decaying. You have no choice. Imagine how society that seemed to be sinking and sinking more and more into the abyss. I want you to imagine what will happen to this society after the Lord Jesus takes his believers home to heaven. Imagine what will happen. Satan who's now being held in check by the power of the believers, the Holy Spirit that is given to the believers is going to have a high day. Imagine the wickedness and evil that is being restrained now because of the prayers of the believers, because of the fasting of the believers, because of the preaching of the gospel. I want you to imagine how they're going to be unleashed upon the earth. But until this day, you and you and you and you and I are to be like lumps of salt stacked between fish and stop it from rotting. And the rotting fish is in your neighborhoods, it's in your offices, it's in your clubs, it's in your associations, it's in your schools, it's in your colleges. Wherever you may be, there is rotting fish that needs to be kept from rotting society. How do we do that? By declaring to our world there is only one solution, there's one answer, and his name is Jesus. We could and we should influence schools. We could and we should influence school boards. We could and we should influence local government. We could and we should influence the state legislators. We could and we should influence our federal government. But I want to tell you what the Word of God says. That the way to do that is by uplifting Jesus as the only answer, as the only solution. To all of our problems. Listen to me. Our problem is not economics. Our problem is moral. And the only way we can solve our moral problem is by returning to Jesus Christ. We can talk to unbelievers about family values until we are blue in the face. They will not understand us until their heart become regenerated. And changed. We can talk about cleaning the media, cleaning the movies, cleaning television, 
as if we are speaking a foreign language to unregenerated heart. Jesus is the answer. Our saltness has to do with bringing men and women to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Our saltness has to do with bringing men and women to the power of Jesus Christ. Listen very carefully, please. I'm coming to the very last part of this message. And this is a challenge for every one of you. I pray that you respond to that challenge now. Jesus said that his followers can lose their saltness. I didn't say you lose your salvation. He said you lose your saltness. In fact, I'm told that salt as this sodium chloride is a very stable chemical compound. Which is really very resistant to attack. Very interesting that Jesus will use salt. And the only thing that will weaken its effectiveness is when it's mixed with other contaminants. The only thing that's going to weaken the effectiveness of the salt is when it is contaminated with impurities. Then it will not only become useless, it becomes dangerous. It becomes dangerous. There is no more dangerous person than a half-baked Christian who had just inoculated enough to know a few things but never brought it to the truth of coming to his or her knees to the cross of Jesus Christ. These salty salt cannot be used as fertilizer, cannot be used because it will kill the plants. It cannot be used anywhere else except to be thrown out in the streets and with the compacting factor of people walking on it and animals walking on it, it will stop the road from eroding. Jesus said that the Christians are in danger of losing their saltness. They are in danger of losing their effectiveness. They are in danger of losing their influence. They are in danger of losing their impact upon society. Please hear me right. Our impact upon society does not depend upon some clever methods. Our impact upon society does not depend on lobbying or marching. Our impact upon society depends upon being distinct from society. Our impact upon society is dependent on not being mixed so much with society that people really can't tell a difference. If you're hanging around somewhere, your office, your neighborhood, and people don't know that you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, something wrong. Your saltness is not working. Jesus said it would be useful for nothing except to be thrown out. I pray to God that one person who's hearing me today would be in that predicament. There was a custom among a certain segment of the Jewish people that when an apostate returns to the faith before he was received into the synagogue again that he would lie across the door of the synagogue and invite people to trample upon him as they enter in. In fact this custom was taken by some early Christians they adopted that and that segment of the Christian church and they required a repentant Christian to lie down at the door saying trample upon me who are salt which has lost its savor. I'm not recommending such thing. But you see the seriousness by which they took the calling of being salt of the earth. Are you ready to be a world changer? Or are you contented with sugar water? That is a question. Which side are you going to be on? Are you ready to make a difference? Or are you contented to be trotted upon? <laughs> 